The basal metabolic rate or BMR actually helps to estimate the number of calories required by your body while it's functioning at rest. So for example, I want to know how much calories I can take per day. I need to actually use the BMR calculator in order to get that value. So for instance, we have this calculator at the calculator.net over there. We can just go in, place our age, choose our gender and then height and the weight. And then we can just calculate. So for example, I can take 1605 calories per day. And you, you can based on your even uh, based on your like activity level, you can increase or decrease the calories. So, for example, if you exercise uh, one to three times per week, then your cal your activity based on your activity activity level, you can actually take um, two to zero seven um, calories per day. So um, the goal of this whole exercise is obviously to build the BMR calculator. And for this, um, we'll be. Um, we'll be obviously we also need some some sort of a formula so uh, that will be provided to you so this is the BMR calculation the imperial calculation and this is the metric calculation um, so the for the metric you need the weight to be in the kgs and the height to be in the centimeter and for example if you're using the imperial calculation you need the weight to be in the pounds and height to be in the inches uh, and the formula is provided for both men and the women and by using this, we are going to actually um, calculate the BMR value. Now, let's just get started. Um, you will also be provided with the HTML. So it saves your time. And so is the CSS. So first thing, um, let's just um, set up the environment. So for um, saving my time, I have already um, have the app set up and you can do the same by using uh, code sandbox or even can do it from scratch so firstly i'm going to create a component which could be called as a bmr.js and uh, bmr in fact and the file of oops maybe i need to actually delete this and we'll create another file bmr.js and we'll also create a CSS file because the CSS is already provided to me. So I'm going to use the CSS. We'll import all of this. And over here, one thing to notice, uh, one thing you can notice is that I have imported the Google fonts and via the CSS way, not by the any sort of like installing a sort of plugin or module actually. Or including it as a file um, so this is um, this this is another way you can actually import the fonts now the next thing is so we have the um, CSS with us we are going to use the HTML so I'm gonna copy this and we'll go into my bmr.js we will create my firstly react class component so let's do that and Let's just make it okay. Firstly, I'm gonna place the HTML over here. Next, I'm gonna fix this up. Uh, so, export default, so it should be class BMR. So, that's fine. And the end, we'll dive in this and we'll actually make it like this. Now, if we will go to app, so in the app, I'm gonna import this up um my component is this time bmr and the file name was bmr so that's being done i'm going to create this component and we'll check whether uh, the component is active or not um so let's just go and test so okay that means the css is not imported yet so let's just go in and call the css uh, import bmr is the name so once i do that i'm going to save in and you already see the html and the design that we had um, is active you can even go and modify it if needed so for example if you want to have this as bold you can simply go in and um, for example can change uh, let's see so it's H2, I want this to be bold. So I can just go in and, and see where the H2 is and we'll place on weight to be 
board. So this is it for this part. And now um, coming back to the coding. So I'll reduce the size a bit. And so this part is done. We'll remove this even and just trying to make it a little more cleaner. The next thing is I'm gonna actually make this a little more and better so you can actually, um, I mean, uh, read it through or while I'm coding, you can actually easily understand this. So just cleaning it up a bit more. Um, so input and labels input and there was another one over here so that's about it i think uh, that's the first that's the first thing we needed to do in order to actually uh, make sure that everything is clean the next thing is obviously we will need the states in order to store these values right so uh, to handle that let's just create the constructor first so constructor and we call in super oops sorry for that and then we will start with the state um the first thing that you can actually think of is obviously the gender so we can have a blank gender then you have the weight uh which which we which could be also be blank then age um, then your height in i'm gonna be building in the height in the feet uh, value later on i would expect everyone to actually convert um these values into other forms even into inches then you have activity um we need to measure the activity as well um then the mr value which is the result so that's um that is obviously we need it as well now if you will notice we have these input values obviously when we are going to attach the states they somehow needs to actually store the values so for doing that we need to actually use the on change um sort of an event actually so let's start with the easy one first with the input of the age so let's just go over here it's the type number and on change uh, what we are going to do it is we are going to handle this um uh, input actually and assigned to the state so let's just stay on change we are going to call it this dot handle um, age change or something like that that'd be better because this is what we need actually same will be applied for the other parts even so let's just first create one function to handle this actually and there will be one someone will click obviously we'll have a one parameter which is event over here and we are going to set the state very easy actually and you will need to replicate this uh, for other inputs as well so for handling the age so age comes from over there and from the event uh, we get the value even dot target dot value so that's it now okay so that we have this value coming in so for example if you place in 22 it's going to accept the value now we're going to um, replicate this for the other values as well so let's um, let's look into that okay so let's just replicate um this one for uh what more values do we have we have weight so handle weight change and the state is weight obviously we're going to place these uh functions later on on um, each input so let's do let's i'm just trying to save my time that's about it height feet so um the height feet change obviously there are there is another way this is the most of the you can say it's the basic way of handling um yeah this event change there are hooks available which can be used but for now we're going to stick with this method and later on obviously can learn the hooks even they are little advanced um so okay handle height inches change 
then you have okay one two three um the gender is over there even so let's handle that even okay handle gender uh, okay here we go gender uh, okay just make sure while you're copying uh, you don't actually do some sort of a mistake sometimes it happens that uh, we copy paste and um, we sort of like mix it up and later on it's very hard to actually find um, the blunder that you did okay so we have the gender we have um, okay we have the gender we have the age then we have the height feet and inches okay so that's good and there was one more which is activity one so we call this uh, activity this one is the activity drop down so we call this activity change and that's about it now we're going to go in and actually place um, these functions on each of the inputs that we have so firstly the one that I created I'm going to use that again and we'll start off with the uh, height and we'll just place them like this uh, height feet change okay uh, feet change okay and then you have there was there must be another one i can see which is over here height in inches um so we'll go back again and we'll copy this and change okay next is obviously the age so this done now the weight handle weight uh, handle weight is over here so that's done okay so now it remains is the radio buttons and obviously the um, select this um, you actually do it in a different a very different uh, I mean method not like uh, you can say I mean you will still use this but if you remember and it needs to be like checked in case for example if the state value is female then somehow it should remain checked so what we will need to do it is we are going to actually um, use on change together with um, condition or you can say state value so let's do that on change um, this dot let's just call it uh, it was gender so do we have the gender with us yep so let's just go in and place this now if let's suppose we have uh, I mean I mean I'm now going to use the state for checked states so checked equals to this dot state dot um, gender if it's equals to one then this value will become true and if it's two then it will become uh, you can say this is going to be like um, male will be marked actually so that is one thing we need to see that the values are placed in or not so that's the important stuff so we have value one value two that's correct so this is good the next thing is the select input so very much like uh, the radio buttons obviously we need to handle this even but over here it's a little different way so we're going to place not in the options uh, attribute or you can say not between the options attribute we're going to place it between uh, we're going to place it where we have a select so value is equals to um, in fact this dot state dot um, activity so that's the first thing and on change we are going to again do on change um, this dot handle uh, on change or its activity change so that's completely fine now okay there's one more thing which i have missed over here which is actually getting the um, value set up already so for example you can even use the state for the values 
So for example, this one weight has uh, one state. So we can assign already predefined values like value this dot state dot weight. Over here, we don't need it, but we can actually do this. So let's just uh, for practice, we use it actually height feet and then height inches. Uh, really depends. I mean, you um, sometimes you you don't need it. So I mean, you don't even uh, you don't need to even use it over here. Okay. So for age, uh, age. Okay. So we have now uh, the you can say the basic setup done. We are now going to actually work towards. Um, getting the input values and obviously calculating the PMR. So the first thing is um, creating a sort of a on-click event. So when let's suppose this button is clicked, something needs to happen. We need to get these values in which we uh, set it up over the states and then use those values to calculate the PMR. So um, let's just create one function, call it um, calculate PMR. So it could be like, calculate, um, calculate BMR. And for now, let's just do it this way. That's fine. I'm gonna quickly place, actually I need to see one thing, console.log, this um, dot state dot, I want to check um, the weight. And when I click this and let's see what I get. Um, so, on click um, this dot um, this dot calculate PMR. Once I have that, so let's just check what happens. Um, in fact, I don't. In fact, one mistake over here. I can actually use it like this. That'd be more better and appropriate. Okay, so that should be it. I need to check the console whether the values are coming or not. So let's just set some value. to C console and click. Okay, so we got 52 from over here. So when let's suppose I change it to something else, the values are changing and we are actually receiving the value. So this is good. Now let's just um, get these values and in calculate what we call as the BMR. So firstly is uh, we need the age. So let age is equals to this dot state dot age. Then you have, um, you need the gender, this dot state dot gender, because the formula change is based on the gender actually. So height and um, feet, actually I did feet, um, and this dot state dot height and feet. Same goes for height and in inches. Okay, so I am okay. So now we have height and in inches. Then you need the weight finally. Weight is equals to this dot state dot weight. Okay, so we now have all the parameters we need. The next thing maybe we need to actually, um, uh, I mean, we need to see is obviously what happens if someone actually misses a certain value. So for example, I forgot to place um, the weight, then somehow I should tell the user that, okay, um, here is an arrow or the error appears. So for that, let's just um, start with checking the values, whether they, were, they are null or not. So age could be like this. If age is equals to um, null, then we actually will prompt the error. So similar to where you can replicate um, and have an or condition for one, two, three, four, five inputs. Uh, one, two, three, four, and five. Now just simply copy and paste to make your life easier. Um, height and in inches and weight. So what could be the error? So maybe we need uh, some sort of an error state even, which could um, help us uh, prompt the user an error. So we bring in here an error state and we will once, let's suppose 
this um, condition gets true, then we'll set the state to be like the error state with some sort of a message. So error becomes um, maybe like uh, you, you are required to fill like all the fields. All fields are required. So that could be the error. And how we can actually display it over here. That is another stuff. So we need to actually go into where we have a, a where we have render and the return. So over here above the return, we can declare just like we uh, learned how to do actually conditional rendering. This is over here. We're going to apply that. So we are going to create a variable let error and over here we're going to check the state. If this dot state dot error is true, then what we are going to do it is we are going to actually use the variable just created arrow and we'll assign some div um, let's suppose call it class name equals to arrow and over here we're going to use whatever we get in the state as a value so if you remember so once this state is set we get the error value or error message which we actually set it up over here so Initially, obviously, it's blank, so this condition won't be true. So we this won't be this won't get displayed. Where we can place that? Mm, okay, we can place it over here. Arrow. So let's just check. Now, uh, over here. So we had um, the screen refreshed already, and you can see there is no error visible. Now, for example, we are not giving it a value. You will see all uh, an error all fields are required now for instance we start giving in some values so let's see what happens oops we actually haven't set it up um, or have not mentioned that okay we have got the value so even um, once the state is set it's not getting reset in short so we need some sort of a way once this is uh, like once this state is met um, i mean once this condition fails um, it's just somehow, um, I mean, somehow resets. So firstly, uh, to stop uh, moving ahead, we are going to use the return. So it returns from this particular point if this condition is met. So for example, um, now we have all the values. So this condition actually fails. And we had this error state already um, like assigned. So we're going to reset. How are we going to reset? It's very straightforward. It's, it's, it's very simple. Um, it's something like this. Now let's just try it again. Um, you will see uh, this functioning email 22, like for example. And so we have no errors right now. Now we have an error. And let's suppose I place in the error is gone. So that means that this is um, this particular formula is working actually. The next thing we need is obviously the formulas. So we have a different formula for um, uh, men and a woman. So we are going to use that. I'm going to bring it over here. And so if you look at the formula, uh, okay. So we expect the user to place the weight in the pounds, by the way, and um, height to be in the inches. And so some sort of a display that we need actually. There, or there is another way even that you can actually convert the weight uh, into kgs actually. So that'd be a lot more, that will make a lot more sense. So let's just make it um, easier actually. So I'm gonna do that. Uh, we'll place this formula aside. We'll use this metric calculation. And okay. Over here, we have a weight in kgs, height in centimeters, and we expect the user, okay, I had this. So maybe this could be your challenge. <laughs> that would be good. I am going to go back and actually use the imperial formula. Okay, so we'll first have a man PMR. So if the gender is one, I'm gonna use that. So let PMR, be initialized as empty for now and i'm gonna actually um calculate the bmr for men so if gender is equals to one 
we are going to have a BMR is equals to um, 66 plus 6.2 multiply by weight so it's uh, weight over here and then you have plus 12.7 multiply by height in inches and so height in inches feet in inches so maybe I'll need actually a sort of a formula to get the total height. So to save my time, I'm actually using my existing one over here. Height in feet and height in inches. So let's just check this for the this I get the height. So now after that is minus 6.7, uh, 6.76 into age if in case by chance the formula is incorrect so um, i apologize for that but um, more or less this is the formula that uh, uh, that we that we use actually to calculate bmr but um, you can just investigate and um, correct it if it's wrong so if gender is one then we have this bmr else if gender is equals to two we have the other one so let's just check oh, oops it's the other way around it's gender equals two and one so one mistake over here uh, the male value is two over here um, that i have used uh, and for female it's the one okay now coming back to this and six fifty five point one four point three five and 4.7 oh uh, and minus 4.7 into h okay obviously uh, the whole point of this exercise is actually to make you learn how you can actually create such form calculators so i hope that's okay i mean if in case the formula is a little messy then just bear with it and hopefully you will have the right formula in your challenge okay so bmr um, we actually had a state bmr over here which we are setting it up again now with the bmr value maybe i will call it bmr calculator and we'll call it bmr calculated value okay now uh, we're going to use the conditional rendering again and so if for example the bmr state is set we're going to show the value over here so that could be called as the result or um, result BMR. So let result BMR be like that. And if the BMR state is set, we are actually going to um, assign the value and we'll call it result. And this dot state dot BMR will be displayed. And where we should display this result BMR could be below away um, below this button okay so we have this button over here let's just place it okay now let's let's test whether we have an error or no error so I don't know my exact weight in uh, pounds so maybe it's fine uh, let's just do this calculate okay so we finally have um, the BMR calculated now um, to calculate the obviously the uh, activity level you need to actually um, use whatever the value is assigned uh, whatever value we get from over here and then multiply it with the BMR and display it at the bottom so the formula is given you can use the gist so for example if it's little or no exercise you multiply by 1.2 if it's light exercise, you multiply by 1.375. Moderate, then you multiply by 1.55. Heavy exercise, 6 to 7 day, then you multiply by 1.725. 25 and uh, so on. Now your challenge is to obviously to calculate the activity level. I'll show you or I'll give you a hint actually. And there's another stuff you can do it. So only show activity, one activity form once the BMR is calculated. So for instance, right now this form is visible maybe you um, what you can do it is you can create another state which says 
or maybe use just the BMR. So once you have the BMR value, uh, then you show this up and you don't, you no longer need to show it before uh, this value is created, um, is calculated. So think about it, how you can do this. My, um, I mean, I'm gonna give you a hint, it's going to be via the same conditional rendering method um, as we have done it over here. So you can apply, use it, use it like this. Then uh, once um, you're done with these two challenges, then obviously you can convert the formulas. So for example, um, the one I have used is um, the imperial formula, or you should even check it. Well, maybe there could be a mistake. I have a little doubt, but you can still check. So the other stuff you can do it is you can create a metric calculation, uh, which is just converting the pounds to kg and um, inches to actually um, in centimeters. So uh, before that, you can do it by applying um, just before, uh, just over here, convert the height to centimeters. And same goes for the weight, convert the weight to actually um, pounds. You can use the same formula, just convert the weight to pound and height, which will be coming in actually uh, centimeters, convert that to uh, feet and you'll be done with, you, you'll be done with the formula. Um, so that's about it. I hope you guys can actually complete this challenge. Remember the three challenges are written. One is to calculate the activity level and the other is to calculate the, is to show the activity once the uh, BMR is value is uh, calculated. And the third is obviously um, changing the calculation form. So um, that's it.